welcome back to another video ladies and gentlemen in this video i'm kind of following on from my previous video about could hawk win the all valley if you haven't seen that video make sure you go and check it out um in this video i just wanted to talk a little bit about the little twisted connection between crease and hawk and tying into my last video about could hawk win the all valley i think it would be a perfect way for hawk to stick it to crease to absolutely stick it to him to be the one who actually ends up winning the all valley now i do feel like robbie's going to be the victor and comes out the winner right that's what that's what i personally feel but how sweet would it be for hawk you know crease never see saw him as the top dog he never saw him as the the alpha of the group and then hawk just goes and absolutely sticks it to crease right in his yard right in front of him how cool would that be? It would be... Oh, could you imagine the look on Crease's face? Oh! Oh! And then Hawk could just be like, Hey, you didn't see the potential in me? Well, now you're going to. Oh, that would be sweet. Um, but I want to talk a bit about their journey across the show thus far. And why I feel like as much as Crease sensed the defection within Hawk, I don't think he necessarily wanted Hawk to go. Um... I don't think he's going to be too surprised, and I don't think he's going to be too sad about it. But I think he's going to be a bit, you know, oh, that's a shame. I enjoyed I enjoyed using him. Because let's be real. The minute Kreese sunk his claws into Hawk, and I think the most significant moment was the trashing of the Miyagi-Do dojo. That was the moment, right, where after it was after the mall fight, after Hawk tried putting the beat down on Dimitri, and then Robbie and Sam went to town on him and his friends. And then he goes to the dojo, Moon breaks up with him, and then Crease is like, you know, the fight's only over when you say it is. And from that moment on, I think he just enjoys manipulating Hawk and telling Hawk everything he wants to hear. You know, and he's telling his, you know, his fake stories about what he got up to, and Hawk's like, oh, that's cool. Well, you just see Miguel sat in the corner like, what? Well, get a, get a, get a load of this idiot. Um, and then just across throughout season two, you know. With, with Kreese working in the background and then Hawk, you know, just being loyal to him right at the end. And then that's paid further in, into season three when Hawk has a desire, right? Now, I do I think Hawk would have switched sides um, if he was the number one dog? I don't think so. As much as, you know, Hawk's redemption moment was a great moment, I feel like it all, it all depends on if he's the top dog. And if he gets that number one spot, I don't think he redeems. Just because... That's what he was gunning for. However, as soon as Robbie came in that dojo, he was like, "Right, that's it. I'm, I'm not gonna get a look in. That's it. It's done. It's gonna go to this. It's gonna. It's gonna go to the guy that put my best friend in the hospital. You know. It's, and 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 Hawk's loyalty to Miguel is something I cannot fault at all. You know. Even after you know John Johnny had formed Eagle Fang and Miguel had basically said, "Look, I'm not coming back to Cobra Kai. I'm joining John, Johnny's new dojo." Hawk was still loyal to Miguel and said, "Look, you know, he put Miguel in the hospital." He's the enemy. And then it's at that moment that, you know, he starts to really sort of see what Johnny was saying, that Kreese just sees you as a soldier and nothing more. He doesn't see you as, as as you can be anything other than what you are. And I think just across the season, Kreese has really enjoyed just manipulating him, just using him further and further and further. Someone like Robbie, right? Yes, Kreese is manipulating Robbie. But he's manipulating Robbie because there may be a genuine father-son bond potentially there, uh, you know, in future. And, you know, shout out to RJ if you watch this. You know, he, he said the same thing in the stream. That, yes, it is very possible that I think they could go the route of Robbie could see Kreese as the father he never had. And that could really sort of tie into Kreese's uh, long-term arc for the show. But I do feel like with Hawk, it's a different case. He just sees him as a puppet. You know, it's like... And I compare it to Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren in Star Wars was never going to be Vader. He wanted to be like Vader. He, he, he wanted to be that level. He wanted to be respected like Vader. But he was never going to be the biggest, baddest galaxy guy in the galaxy who could be believed as such running the show. It was never going to happen. Never going to happen. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't be believed as that. You know, obviously, you know, depending on the route they took the sequels. But that's, you know, that's a side note. Um... But however, in the case of Hawk, Kreese is literally just dangling the carrot in front of him. He's dangling the carrot just a little bit to give Hawk that sort of beacon of hope. Ah, maybe he'll see my potential now. Maybe he'll I'll get a look in. And I feel like in the house fight, as I've said before, the minute Hawk switches sides, 
the power dynamic shifts. And this is why Cobra Kai, you know, as great as Robbie will be, and as, as amazing as Tori will be, and as much as a utility player Kyla will be, I feel like recruiting in Sean is such a great option because you need a heavy hitter. You know, you need someone who's aggressive. Like, Miguel is a great fighter, but he fights with tact. He fights with quick movements and kicks, and he'll just knock you clean out. Sam, she fights very similar to her dad. Um, Dimitri, he's coming up in the ranks, but he's still got a lot to learn. And Hawk is just out and out aggressive, which is why I said in the, you know, Tori's threat video, if they jump him, don't be surprised if it backfires. That, yeah, they could shave his mohawk, yeah, whatever. But let's be real. If you jump Hawk and you piss him off, you know, he's got three senseis of training under his belt now. He could be dangerous. Very, very dangerous when unhinged. And I feel like we're gonna. it would just be such a great way for Hawk to stick it to Crease. He'd be like, hey, you didn't see the value in me. Look what I am now. Here's what's up. Here's what's up, Crease. Here's what's up, Mr. War Veteran. And to be honest, I think Hawk got out at the right time because Silver would have had an absolute field day with Hawk. He would, oh, he would have had fun. He would have had absolute fun with Hawk. Um, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments section below. I feel like season three really expanded on the connection between these two. And, you know, Kreese has a sort of, I'd say respect. I'm going to call it that. I say he has a respect for Hawk. He doesn't respect Hawk as the number one, but he respects Hawk to the point where Hawk is the only student in that dojo that can talk back to Kreese and not get any repercussions. How many times across season three did Hawk talk back to him and say, you know, and challenge him and challenge his authority? And you could look at it as, well, Kreese is just being tactful. He's doing it with grace. He's doing it with, you know, why get pissed off? I'll use my way of words to tell Hawk why this is happening. You know, and then it, it, like when Mitch gets eliminated by Kyla and then, you know, Kreese is like, yeah, that's it. You're out. You're done. Bye bye. Off you go. And, you know, Hawk's like, Sensei, Arseface has been loyal to this dojo. And he's like, I'm afraid he's not Cobra Kai material. So he does. He Hawk is the only person in that dojo that can actively, objectively speak up out of everyone else. Besides, obviously, Tori. But this was like, you know, if you remove Tori from the picture now, and then Hawk is the one that could speak up to him. Because I think, in a way, he respects how good Hawk is as a fighter. Yes, sometimes Hawk can let his emotions get the better of him. And that's why in Season 4, that's going to be his role. He will fill that Robbie role, you know, the Robbie void that Daniel will now be feeling. Daniel can help another student. He can help someone. He can really help Hawk, you know. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Hawk's arc for Season 4 overall in another video. This is sort of like a, um, uh, a Part 2, if you will, and that'll be a Part 3. But in this one, it's mostly just talking about the connection between Kreese and Hawk and, you know, just dangling the carrot in front of Hawk, just teasing him. You know, it's like you, you, you've got a dog or a cat in front of you. You're holding the treat in front of them. You don't even give it to him. You just keep dangling it. You just tie it on a piece of string and leave it from the ceiling and you just leave it up there. You know, it don't matter if the dog or cat climbs up onto a, a unit to try and catch it. They still ain't getting it, you know, and that's what I feel like he was doing with Hawk. So I don't think... He's going to be too happy that Hawk defected, but I don't think he's going to be surprised either. You know, a lot of... Kreese is always thinking 10 steps ahead. You know, he's a, he's a tactician, you know, not just a manipulator. He's a tactician. You know, he comes at these things like a soldier would. He's thinking 10 steps ahead of everyone else. And this is why when he says to Johnny, you know, we'll help our boy get back on his feet. And Johnny says, you go anywhere near Miguel, blah, 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 blah. Crease as soon as as soon as that happened, he was he was straight visiting Robbie. He was like, you know, hey, okay, I've been visiting Robbie. Y you are gonna regret this. He did give Johnny the heads up. That's that's how far Crease thinks ahead. You know, he thinks ahead, long term. And I just there's something about Hawk winning the All Valley that I really like. I just like it. You know, it just I can see it being Miguel, Robbie, or Sam. Um, and I'm throwing Sam in the mix. I know some people might not want to hear that, but I'm just I'm just saying I might do a video talking a little bit about her because there's there's a lot of potential there. Most of these guys have been training since you know a couple of years. She's been training since she was a kid, you know. And I know time doesn't always measure skill. I mean, look at you know Robbie, Hawk, and Miguel, prime examples. But 
in this case, she is Daniel LaRusso's daughter, and it could potentially happen. But with Hawk and Kreese, I just love the idea of Hawk beating Robbie in the final, right? The person, like, you know, it just... It, 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 it's so poetic. The guy who comes into the dojo that's taken as the one who's better than him, right, is the one he beats in the All Valley to win, to stick it to Kreese and say, hey, you see... You should have chosen. You should. What? You see? You didn't choose me, and this is what happens. You lose. It's over. Now, obviously, there's two more seasons after this, and you know, let's say for example, Cobra Kai lose. I'm not sure what they're going to do for the final two seasons. Um, I don't see a world where Kreese is just going to bugger off, especially with. Put it this way: even if Cobra Kai lose, Kreese ain't going nowhere because Silver's coming back. With Silver coming back, there is going to be some absolute tomfoolery happening. Absolute tomfoolery. But anyway, guys and girls, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought. And, you know, just let me know what you think of this sort of, the scenes that, you know, um, and it must have been fun for Jacob Bertrand and Martin Cove, you know, to work together this season quite a lot, you know, and, and really sort of see how Hawk developed on his own with no other key fighters around him. Yes, you could argue Tori, but let's be real. Come on. Hawk was the man of that dojo. Uh, he was the dude. Um, and, you know, as soon as Kyla's crew started coming in, as soon as elimination started taking place, and then as soon as Robbie was brought in, he was like, yeah, that's it. I'm, pff, I'm, I'm, yeah. That's it. And when Kree says, we're going to need a new champion, someone with no fear and no mercy or whatever, it cuts to Tori. So Kreese was already eyeing up Tori and Robbie, probably from the get-go. And he just sees Hawk as a puppet that he can just dangle the carrot in front of and never actually give it to. You know, there's a great line um, from Snoke in The Last Jedi, right? He says to, Je to Kylo Ren, he says this. You wonder why I keep a rabid cur in such a place of power. A cur's weakness, carefully manipulated, can be a sharp tool. Now, obviously, you think he's talking about General Hux. He's not. He's talking about Kylo Ren. And how he can influence Kylo Ren to do exactly what he wants to do by dangling the carrot in front of him. And that's exactly what Kreese was doing to Hawk. He was promising him all this great, basically the promised land that he was never going to get. Never, ever, ever going to get. That's, that's what that is. So guys and girls, leave your comments down below. Let me know how great it would feel for Hawk to stick it to Kreese, to shove it to him. Um, and just what you thought of their scenes uh, in Season 3 and, and from Season 2 in general. Um, I'm excited to see if they're going to have any more interactions going in Season 4. I hope so. Um, just because, you know, it would be just funny. It would be like, huh, you're still, still going, yeah? Still got that stupid mohawk. You know, it'd be, it could be cool. But anyway, leave your comments down below. I will see you all in another video soon. And again, we are climbing to 10k subs. We're on the road. We're on the road, baby. Let's get it four and a half K away. Oh, I can feel it.